Hello friends, today we will discuss how to develop 0.45 power curve for aggregate gradation. As you know aggregate gradation is the distribution of particle size expressed as percentage of the total weight and it is obtained by sieve analysis. So you take sieve starting from the larger size progressively moving to the smaller size and find out the weight of aggregate retained on each seal and then express it as a percent passing. And when you plot this pair size distribution of aggregate, it is something like that. On x-axis you take sieve size in millimeter and on y-axis you take percent passing and then this is normally a log scale, this is a normal scale, then you get a grading like this depending upon which mix you are dealing with. Gradation is perhaps the most important property of aggregate as it affects several properties, several important properties of the asphalt mix like stability, permeability, durability, fatigue and resistance to moisture damage. Therefore, gradation is the primary consideration in the design of asphalt mix and that is the first step to select the aggregate gradation. Ministry of Road Transport and Highways and Indian Roads Congress through their several guidelines have suggested the range of aggregate gradation for different types of asphalt mix layers. Theoretically, the best, best grading is one which gives you the maximum density because that maximum density will provide the maximum interparticle interaction and will give you the stability, minimum air wires. But in the asphalt mix design, some air wires are also required and therefore several researchers have suggested different grading charts for different asphalt layers. But the most popular is the grading chart given by Fuller. Fuller and Thompson gave a grading which is called 0.5 power grading. What it says that P is equal to D upon capital D power 0.5. Small d is the particle size and P is the percent passing through this size C and capital D is the maximum size of aggregate in the mixture. Now this is the maximum density curve. This equation gives you the maximum density line and it has been used for several years but in the early 1960s FHWA provided charts which correspond to 0.45 curve. Their equation is that P is equal to d upon d power 0.45. This exponent is not 0.5 but it is 0.45 and that is called 0.45 curve and FHWA provided a standard chart where these conditions can be plotted as a straight line. So, if you take a graph paper which is a normal graph paper. On x-axis you have sieve size in millimeter. On y-axis you have percent passing. Then on this axis you have the sieve size raised to power 0.45. When you take the sieve size raised to 0.45, this curve becomes a straight line. Although when you plot this, line, this curve corresponding to 0.5, it is also a straight line. I will tell the difference between these two. So what is basically given in FHWA, they have a standard chart where you join this, this is 0% and this is 100% passing. And this is the maximum size of aggregate, let us say 45 millimeter. If you join this diagonal here, that gives you 
the complete grading as per this equation. How it is developed? How it is developed? Now, let me just take one example. Suppose, as per Ministry of Road Transport and Highway Specification, the grading for DBM1 is starting with 45 millimeter, 37.5, 26.5, and 13.2, 4.75. These are the sieve sizes for DBM2. 0 0.3.075. Now, if you take in the next column, this is D in millimeter, D power 0 0.45. So, this 45 becomes 5.55 37.5 will be 5.11 and similarly all these values so you have now calculated sieve size raised to 0.45 these are the values now the maximum size aggregate is 45 and this i told you this is the normal graph paper Corresponding to 45, you have this value equal to 5.55. Now you divide this length into a linear scale, starting with 0 to 5.55 and mark these distances here. So corresponding to 0%, you have something like 0 size. Now this is, let us say, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now this is 5, this is 4, this is 3, 2, 1 and 0. 5.11, this size, 5.11 somewhere here, if you drop a perpendicular here, this is the size 37.5. 4.37 here 4.37 is the size which is 26.5 that is how you can generate the sieve size in millimeter on x axis on secondary axis you have a sieve size raised to power uh, raised power 0.45 so you have another 3.19 let us say here so this size is 13.2, 2, this size is 4.75, 1.47, this is your 2.36, is 0 0.3, 0 0.075, 0 0.075. So you develop the complete x axis here. Now suppose you take another mix, let us say other than DBM1, you take DBM2. Now DBM2 starts from here, 37.5. So you simply join this line here from the origin to this point, this point. You get another chart here. You get another chart. Now this corresponds to DBM2. This is DBM1. Similarly, if you have, let us say, maximum size aggregate 26.5, you draw this chart. You draw another chart. All these are straight lines. So, all these will be straight lines on this graph paper, on this chart. And these are the lines of maximum density given by 0 0.45 curve or formula. That is how you develop a family of charts on the same graph paper. And depending upon the layer which you are working on, you can choose the grading. Now, actual grading, actual grading should be following this or it must be at least middle portion of the actual grading should be parallel to this line. So, if you are working on let us say in the same gradation, DBM1, this is the grading. So, your grading, actual grading should fall, fall something like this. Maybe you have a like this grading. It should be almost parallel to the grading. It can cut this line, but 
the upper portion lower portion should be as far as possible parallel to this particularly middle portion of the grading should be parallel to maximum density line now what is the difference between this 0.45 curve and 0.5 curve if you take let us say another column here you make another column here and you find out what is t d raised to the power 0 0.5 now this will be 6.71 now 6.12 and so on all values now if you compare these gradings you have a normal graph paper on this axis you take d raised to the power either 4.5 sorry 0 0.45 or 0 0.5 and here you have the actual sieve sizes and here is the percent passing percent passing now this will be something like this this is your 0.5 curve and this is your 0.45 curve 0.45 curve this is 0.5 curve so what basically it says that for every every sieve size you have a higher percent passing means you have a final grading now the grading will be slightly finer but difference is not much both provides maximum density line in fact fuller equation was developed or was suggested for concrete mix design which was adopted for as far mix design also but this 0.45 curve is suggested by FHWA only for hot mix asphalt design. Now let us say this is the 0 0.45 power line and you plot your actual grading on this line. Now you can achieve different types of gradings on in the field and uh, this grading for example this grading is dense graded mix that gives you a dense graded mix this type of grading is a uniform grading uniform grading then this type of grading when you compare it with the maximum density line this is a gap graded gap graded grading and this grading which is consistently below this is a coarse graded coarse grading so how different types of grading compare with the maximum density line so i have told you how to develop this 0 0.45 curve in asphalt mix design it offers advantages over the traditional fuller curve by promoting denser grading or denser aggregate packing which translates to improved stability and reduced air wires while the fuller curve also aims the maximum density line the 0 0.45 curve provides a more refined approach to achieving maximum density especially when using a wide range of aggregate sizes in the mix as generally is the case with the asphalt mix design you have a number of sieves and therefore 0 0.45 is now used commonly used in modern asphalt mix design so friends thank you very much for watching this video if you have any questions you can write